actor Tom Hardy and former F1 driver Mika Salo are attempting to drive a thousand kilometers along the coldest road on earth, Siberia's Road of Bones. Yeah, there's a reason why this particular road is called the Road of Bones. That's because the people that built the road were prisoners. People sent out into the wilderness to build this road. And, um, many, many, many of them died and are now buried. They're buried underneath it, so. This extreme climate and the harsh gulag era have left Siberians mentally and physically strong. It's created an elite local sporting talent who eagerly await a wrestling contest with Tom and the team. I wear tights and makeup for a living. I've promised myself that I'm not going to say no to anything on this journey, within reason, you know? Obviously, if the medics say that, you'll, that will kill you, then I, I won't do it. After five hours of driving, the Chirapcha Institute of Physical Training, the grappling venue for Team Tom versus the local heavyweights. Two Olympic gold wrestlers have been produced here, and the team have been invited to take part in a training session to see how it's still possible to have fun in a harsh environment. The philosophy here is that physical activity is the route to happiness for all. Except for Aldo, who gets taught a lesson in endurance rope climbing. And after that, you can see why uh, this gym's created two gold medalists. With the team's pride now at stake, Tom and Aldo warm up before the evening's main event, about to establish British physical prowess against the local talent. I'm going to take one for the team, Siberian style. I'm in the middle of that circle right there. It's going to go really badly. <laughs> I don't know the rules. And, um, and the dude that I'm, I'm being put up against in the series. This ancient form of wrestling is called Kapsage, the Yakutian word for agile. A tactical dance followed by rapid attacks. The idea is to force some part of your opponent's body to the ground. It's a three round bout, and the end of the first round can't come soon enough for Tom. I'm done. Taught for over a thousand years to Siberian warriors, Kapsage is steeped in all the honour and tradition of a martial art. She's blaming me. Yakushin etiquette says real heroes don't abuse their power and it's disrespectful to show off your superior abilities. Out here, you don't brag if you're better. He went really, really easy on me. So thank you, whoever, <laughs> whoever the Siberian tooth fairy is, for saving my teeth. Aldo, would you like to go in and have a crack? <laughs> Not really. You look at the territory that they live in, the terrain, you think about the strength and the, the humility and the patience that it takes to survive a, you know, in a place like this. I think it's brilliant. I think it's brilliant. And, you know, their humility in, in, this, in this dojo is wicked and just... It schooled me anyway. Russia 2, Britain 0. It's 10 p.m. on day one, and the team set off to find a room for the night. With temperatures in the minus 40s, safety systems like a convoy register after every pit stop are essential. I'll explain it in a second. Eight. Eleven. Twelve. That was quick. That was the quickest. That was the quickest we've ever done it. We do numbering so we don't lose somebody by a tree taking a pee. Because by the time we work out we've lost number nine, we could be a mile down the road. And if we're a mile down the road and that man isn't exposed without his grab bag, which you should have him in at all times, then he'll probably be dead by the time we get to him. Fact. The team are 250 kilometres into their journey. 
There are no hotels, so shelter has to be sought in a small museum of Russian culture. So, end of day one, and um, we're actually pitching tent in a museum. So, we've got to see the boys. Yeah. The lads taking it upon themselves to sleep amongst the artifacts. It's going to be a little warm. Night night. Day two is a 200 kilometer leg that will take the team to the foot of the mountains in Kandiga. Tom and Mika start by experiencing one of the harshest examples of the daily routine in Siberia. We pump the milk to the cows. Kesha is a Siberian dairy farmer who has tended a small and hardy herd here in isolation for more than three decades. Check this out. <laughs> that was a good squeeze. If I had to get my milk every morning like this, I'd, I'd never have time to get anything else done. There's something coming here. Yeah. Oh, it's nice and warm. Are oh, you on fire, pal? It all goes in my sleeve. Right. That's shoplifting. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a cow farming friend? He built his own house, he said. And it took him four years to build his own house. The reason why he had to do it on his own and took four years is because the local workers that were helping him build his house were being paid in vodka and, and alcohol. And the alcohol ran out in the neighborhood. And uh, so did the local help. Left <laughs> him to build his own house on his own, as well as milk those cows every day as well. Halfway through day two, adventure mechanic Paul carries out some vehicle checks. You're always checking your vehicle because at any given point something could go wrong. These temperatures are actually, plastics can break, uh, belts can actually shear off, uh, wheel bearings, the greases can fail. Um, you, you're always got to be on the careful, constant lookout for things that can go wrong. So far, actually, I'm really happy. The vehicles have performed flawlessly. This is our safety, this is our lifeline. If this thing packs up, we're in the middle of nowhere at extreme temperatures and, and we won't survive. You know, we've got good warm kit, but we rely on this engine more than you can believe. As the expedition continues, the rough road surface, combined with the fearsome cold, takes its toll on the Russian WAS support vehicles. We just stop for a second again, because we're having a lot of trouble with these cars. These WAZs, carburetors are falling off them, exhausts are falling off them, bits and bobs. Yet again, life goes on. If you have to climb under a car at minus 30 and strap your exhaust pipe back onto your vehicle, then that's just what you have to do. Four hundred kilometers from their start point, and still not halfway through, the team settles down for the night at a local house in Kandiga. These will be the last home comforts they will see on the trip. So we have one and it's warm, and, um, and uh, it's also attached to the washing machine. Mac, our team leader, sort of amped it up a bit tonight, you know, uh, at dinner, and said, "Look, you know, we've had a jolly for the last couple of days, and now it's getting serious. It's going to be hard. It's getting colder. We're going higher, and uh, more wind, more open spaces, and uh, no help." It's day three, and the team assemble for a 5 a.m. departure. It's very cool day, it's About minus 400, I think. Slight exaggeration. The temperature has plummeted to minus 40. The engines haven't been turned off since the start of the journey in Yakutsk. Allow the engine temperature to fall below minus 50, and it's possible the oil and coolant will freeze, seizing the cylinders ending any hopes of reaching the finishing line. But force of habit is a funny thing. Oh, I switched off the engine by mistake. You know, I'm not supposed to do it. Why would you do that? Well, by mistake. <laughs> I've seen 
You're a professional driver. Every, every, Why would you make yeah, a mistake? I, I, like I've used this switch off when I stop in the garages so or bits. Is that smart? No, honesty. you know, diesel freezes at minus 50. And, and it's, it's minus 49. It's for minus 49, so if you're fine. So maybe we should start the engine. Yeah, I don't think we should screw around with this <laughs> thing. <laughs> That's what I think too. This is our lifeline. Yes. For four days, this car is. Thank God that just lit back up again. It's the harshest possible place to test cold starting. But the synthetic oil clearly stays viscous and lets the engine's parts spring immediately back into life. Put simply, a bad choice of oil can leave you stranded. So we're really going to rely on that vehicle now. Um, that's it. It's really very cold outside. But if we break down and we don't have any heat, that's it, really. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the reality of it. Um, we're, we've got loads and loads of kit. It's great. We've got great team leaders, and, uh, but it, it's Siberia and it's going to get colder. Yeah, that's that's the worst thing that can happen if the car breaks down because then you lose the heat. And that's it. And it's only a matter of minutes before you get hypothermia and, and die. The car, uh, it's done a good job so far. Uh, we had no problems at all. Roll bars for safety. There's a lot of trucks and they're not the safest in the world. They drive sometimes middle of the road, so it's good to have a safe car. I think I can hit something pretty big with this without getting hurt. Uh, then, uh, of course, good tires, finish made winter tires, some studs on them. These are best you can have. Basically, they're good on snow and ice. And uh, it's all blanked to keep the temperature up so we can get some heat in the cockpit and, uh, and the engine temperature is higher. I still think that uh, it should have a 300 more horsepower and so be for fun. Once we're in the mountains, we're, we're easily going to be heading towards the minus 50 mark. Basically, there's no civilization for 300 miles. These mountains look incredible. And then it suddenly hits me that we, uh, that we're actually going to drive up and through them, aren't we? Yeah. I'm a bit nervous about mountains. I don't like mountain roads. As the team reached the 500 kilometer point, the convoy stops off to take part in a traditional ceremony, asking the shaman gods for a blessing. We give and gift something. I've got a little something that I've made here, um, out of some trinkets um, of mine, uh, for safe passage through the mountains, basically, and also to give something to the spirits. There's a very serious edge to, to this road. I think, I think that's what I'm trying to get across. Let's go and have a look. Let's go, and have, let's go out and get cold. <laughs> What we're doing is uh, we are asking for the soft and nice road without any break for the vehicles. So by putting and giving offers uh, for the fire, the smoke for the fire from the fire will reach the sky and you know, ask for the road from the gods for our blessing. For the second half of this deep freeze road trip, the boys are going to need all the help they can get to tackle the most dangerous leg so far. Still to come, the road of bones bites back and Tom and Mika brave freezing waters. That's enough for me. Oh.